Here we are at Chickamauga Mound, beautiful Chickamauga Mound. Right over there is the mouth of the Chickamauga Creek at the Tennessee River. The Tennessee River is flowing southwest from here and then it's going to wrap around Moccasin Bend in Chattanooga, then go back up and then go through the gorge and then down into Alabama. This is Chickamauga Creek. Oftentimes it's called Chickamauga River. It's so big in the spring. And this is where Dragon Canoe, uh, the greatest chief, war chief of the Cherokee that we know, came down here in 1776 from upriver, from up towards Knoxville area, south of Knoxville, but in that area were all the Cherokee towns in 1776, from 1716 I think is when Timberlake had his map and showed the Overhill Cherokee living in the upper Tennessee River Valley. Dragon Canoe's dad, Atukula Kula, sold a lot of the surrounding land, especially lands to the west that they didn't occupy, but were really good real estate agents, as a friend of mine called it. Sold that land and Dragon Canoe was disgusted and said, screw you, I'm going home. Well, he came down here, away from his dad, upriver, and settled with a bunch of his colleagues who wanted to resist American encroachment, American expansion into the south and into the west. So he canoed down this river, which was really the highway of the time, the, uh, the freeway, canoed down this river and they encountered this place, which I'm sure they had seen before because they had cleaned out uh, this area of Uchi and Muscogee or the Uchi and Muscogee had also left. So this area was essentially empty of Muscogee and Yuchi, they moved here, and Dragon Canoe's arms supplier, arms dealer, was up river, uh, up creek. This was also defensible and it had great farmland. Back in the 15, 1950s, 1960s, when friends of mine used to live here, they said this was all farmland, this was all corn. And indeed, back in 1776, it was also corn because when the uh, white militias came through here to essentially cleanse this land of Native Americans. They encountered all these cornfields and burnt them, wiped them out, to push the Cherokee away from here. And after three years of being here and having to deal with American expansionists, and it's hard to defend because this is so open. This is such good, rich bottom Riverland that Dragon Canoe moved his people or the group moved down river from here to the uh, mouth of Running Water Creek. Miles down from here is uh, the Suck and that was defensible so they moved down below the Suck, defended the Suck uh, from it's a whirlpool in the Tennessee River. It doesn't exist anymore because the back flooding of Nickajack Dam killed the whirlpool. So Dragon Canoe came here in 1776 and it's Chickamauga. Back in the 1960s, this building behind us here uh, was the Roxbury Carpet Mill. And Roxbury was carpet makers from up north. They said, well, you know, there's some good mill work down here. So they built a mill, I guess, closer to the cotton and built this and then they realized that this area was draining into the building. And so what they did was they dug this out. They dug 10 to 15 feet of this out. And here in back of me is Chickamauga Mound. It used to be called Roxbury Mound after the carpet mill. And we think that's a despicable thing to do is to name Native American sites after white landowners who haven't, you know, who are so ephemeral, meaning, you know, they haven't been here long, gone here today, gone tomorrow. Chickamauga Creek has been here all the time and will be here long after we're gone. And Chickamauga calls up into, uh, calls to our consciousness 
you know, the Muscogee, the Yuchi Muscogee people that were here, the Drain Canoe came here. The name had already been set by the Yuchi and Muscogee, so they continued the name Chickamauga. And so we are transplanting. Well, it's not even transplanting. We're calling this mound, what it really is, is the Chickamauga Mound. What you can see is this seven foot, eight foot cutting down this uh, gutting of this area, they took out all the cornfield and uh, they knew this mound was here and in one of the marvels and miracles of uh, 20th century white Americana, they saved this Native American mound. Why? I don't know, because they destroyed the bigger, better stuff, which may be the in point or the intent, but this is called a woodland mound. And the difference between mounds is that the early ones, before the year 1000, archaic woodland mounds, they were all humps of dirt on the horizon. You know, you can still wander around this area and in the fields where you see a bunch of trees, a clump of trees, you may see a mound. Inside may be a mound and it will be conical. It'll be um, like the little prince's drawing of an elephant inside a snake. It's just a bump on the terrain. This is the old land, and in here we know that this was a village area site because of the archaeological. What archaeological means is the artifacts that essentially white archaeologists find that say that there were humans here and this human occupation was over a thousand years ago between 2000 and 1000 years ago so we say approximately five the year 500 of the common era this is the east side as the morning sun hits and this uh, bottom line may be hard to see in the camera this is the bottom line of the old corn field and then up past that tree is the actual mound, Chickamauga Mound, in which were buried presumably the head men, uh, head women of the group 1500 years ago. It has been severely damaged. There was this white guy, his name was C.B. Moore, Clarence B. Moore from Boston and he had some money he had enough money that he was able to buy himself a flat boat and uh, hire him a crew of African Americans to chug up uh, or row up the Tennessee River and stop at every mound that they heard about or saw and dig it. Every mound. Clarence B. Moore, C.B. Moore. He came to this mound and said, it had been too badly dug and destroyed for him to even consider setting his men on digging more of it out. And what he was doing was essentially grave robbing. And that's what most archeology, span I gotta say is, is uh, I, I respect a lot of archeologists, but, and they are usually set to a task. In the 1940s and 50s under TVA, uh, they were going to flood so many Native American sites that they created, you know, what's called salvage archaeology. And they came through the Tennessee River Valley digging stuff up, digging up burials, taking up thousands of Native American skeletons and the artifacts that went with them and stored them. Today they're still being stored in the bottom of the University of Tennessee Knoxville's stadium in boxes. Thousands of Native American bones in boxes so that they can be studied. And the reason why they aren't being repatriated is because they don't know the exact cultural origin of those bones. Whose bones are they? Are they Yuchi? Are they Muscogee? Are they Choctaw or Chickasaw? Presumably anything in this area is not Cherokee because the Cherokee, as I just said before, came down here in 1776 they've been making excursions in through here and of course they wiped out the Yuchi over there. So Clarence B. Moore and then the later archaeologists came through here. 
dug up a lot of Native Americans and the artifacts, and there are still white relic hunters, white pot hunters who come out here. When we were cleaning this off for the first time, you can see an old picture of this, and it just looks like a green ball of tree, of plant, huge green ball. Now, in the past 10 years, we have taken out trees, and now you can see that there's actually a shape to this mound, and in it we found um, a pot hunter's uh, little military shovel, utility shovel, that they used to come out here at night, cover themselves in a tarp, you know, use a red lamp, and dig to find stuff that they could sell to other collectors. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you want to see a video of the very first Woodland Mound that we visited, click right here-ish. And be sure and subscribe below because we have lots more trips planned for the future. We're very excited. Uh, next week we're going to Spring City, Ray County area in Tennessee, and we're planning a bigger trip to go down into Georgia. Um, Dahlonega, Helen, Georgia area. So very excited about that. So please, please be sure and subscribe so you don't miss out.